Well, good day, guys. Here in Sweden, Gothenburg city. Yeah, yeah. It's really mimicking last year's summer. Very hot in the spring and almost unbearable. Unbearably hot. And a very, very rainy, unpredictable summer vacation. And this one is doing great, at least, in Obelia. Yeah. <clears throat> At least I got a couple on my balcony. My sympathiums. I had to bring them out from the pots, otherwise they will be overwatered. Uh, they look quite alright. And my van of tricolors, trying to get them, <laughs> yeah, trying to do something. Give them a bit of change of conditions to make them yeah, at least try to bloom for me. <laughs> it's not really working, is it? Yeah. Christardus, another Christarda, Sologeny, so yeah, a couple of Sologenies, and Ancidopsis Stephanila and Ancidopsis Nellyila, uh, next to each other, like a bit of humidity. Uh, as much as she wants to bloom, <laughs> this little Nelly, but uh, yeah. And some Grecum orchids, the um, Bossarii and Crestwood, smaller guy down there. I try to encourage um, the creating of buds by giving the orchids, the Ungrecoid orchids, a little bit, uh, yeah, a sudden fluctuation in daytime and nighttime temperatures. Will induce flowering. It always has been, but uh, not yet. <laughs> Last year it went very quickly. It took about one week until. This one wasn't spike, but anyways, let's move inside. Here's my kitchen. Here's some free space. Can you imagine, guys? No, it's not really free. It's been occupied by these guys. My quite well-grown Pathopedalum orchids. Growing quite nicely as well, I think. It's a um, beautiful species. Philippine MC. And a lovely hybrid with a couple of new fans coming. <laughs> Three new fans, that's great. And Philip and Nancy, variation Robellini. Pavipedum exul times Rochi of the Anum. <laughs> Creating something new. And Pavipedum Saint Swithin, the ten fanned orchid. So they need a good space and they actually do need some better light and for the time being are being provided. Uh, so I went out and got myself another new 5000 lumen lit tube. The one I already have about four of. You can see one hanging in the cabinet over there. Very very good light and even though it doesn't contain all of the light waves, all of the color, all of the spectrum, um, that would have been preferred. It's actually doing its job very well. For us poor guys who cannot afford buying an armature for a great deal of money, well, we'll have to make do with what we can, all right? The same goes for housing. I would love to have a larger, Apartment, perhaps live in a villa, large villa. But then I cannot work part time, and I would need to be a millionaire. So um, <clears throat> this is what I'm left with. Housing prices, oh, that, that market is insane here in Sweden. Uh, so it's either or. So I prefer or <laughs> or either. I'm not sure. <laughs> I prefer to. Um, be able to have some spare time and to buy some new orchids. And if they do not fit, I would need to uh, select the ones that doesn't bloom, doesn't like it in here, and sell them or give them away. That's how I need to do it. Since I would like to have and keep many, many different genuses. 
So I have something to show you guys on my YouTube channel. So, here are the paths. I'm soon going to be up there. But I have a little slight problem. Uh, yeah, how to add the tube on top of the orchids, yeah? I cannot hang it. I'm not able to drill holes to the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. It's a very, very heavy task and I will not indulge in that kind of matter and that kind of business one more time. I tried it out. It was horrible. So, uh, no. So, I found something else underneath here. A stand. I really did find a stand. Which you can adjust. Uh, yeah, you can see. It's in English. Adjustable height from 40 to 70 centimeter. And that's just about all we need. And that's the largest one that's going to sit up there. So it will be perfect for it. And you can adjust easily, adjust the width. Yes. So let's do it. Let's do this before I show you the update on an orchid and more hall I did about one year and two months ago. Yeah? 27th of May 2023. I did this haul, so I might as well just give you guys a little quick update on the orchids I bought. Yeah? While we're at it, as I always say. Yeah? Hmm. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. That's just about it. It's empty. What kind of instruction here? Uh, you see? LED bar stand. Stainless steel stand with adjustable height from 4 to 70. You can easily suspend your LED bar, achieving the ideal angle and positioning to nurture your plants. Yeah. Right, let's see the instructions. Yeah. I don't need any instructions. All I need to do is look at the picture. It's so, so much easier. Loosen up the screws. Yeah. Quite easy when I got a good grip. <laughs> That's recommended. Yes. Oh, it's so hard in here. It's soon gonna be heavy rain. Oh, yeah, we shed a load of rainfalls again. Hard summer rain. And it's all getting it's getting all sweaty. Yeah. Alright. This is how it's gonna be done. This and this. And add it back. Here, little screw. So it's just as easy as that. So yeah. Well, I'm not sure if there's anything missing in here. I cannot see the clips. <laughs> but the instructions are well describing other stuff. All right. So, included in the LED bar package. And that's the package I did not get since I do not need it. So, yeah, yes, yeah, it's all right. It is what it should be. That stuff out of the way and assemble the little LED tube. Yes. Let's open it up and see what we can do. And included in this package, you can find oh, plastic this time. Everybody's telling you to uh, not use plastic so items, so I'm not sure really. Uh, Right. Got a little bit of stuff here. These things you're gonna need. Yeah, both ends. And these guys you're gonna need at least yeah, two of them. Yeah, no, yeah, one or two. Yeah, we shall see. And these guys you're gonna need both ends. And first, try to assemble this stuff. You will need a switch, won't you? Huh? Cable set with switch. That's what you need. And make sure that this guy is connected to this guy. Okay, like this. Yeah. So this is the part which needs to be attached to it. This way. Nothing else. All right. Oh, like this. Yeah, could be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, 
that was in there and now that one's almost there uh, shit yeah wait no yeah and in you go but i would rather see if it works and switch it on and it works yeah goodly good yeah. so do, 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 do. all right always say do it yourself pardon <clears throat> now yeah no moisture will go in there so it's safe so we're going to do the same thing on the other side make it safe and in this case we do not need this one you can only use a little short plug assemble it you're not gonna connect it to another item on the other end so to speak not this time maybe in the future and not today so seal it properly and add it on yeah. to the side with no switch and there you go here we got the stand and well we're not going to be able to connect it properly until we know the width of that little cabinet will we so that cabinet is oh, exactly the same width as the tube so it will be quite easy to uh, mount it to the stands so that I'm gonna do I'm gonna show you guys after it's finished well it wasn't so easy it suddenly dawned on me that 40 centimeters above the ground yeah wasn't so very much look it's a quite high plant. It's not bobbly by any means, but as I needed to have it place the LED tube on top, <laughs> it became quite bobbly, but not the stand itself. No, it's not bobbly. Worst case scenario is that the LED tube pushes itself forward a little bit. It won't drop. It's quite light. Yeah, <laughs> light and light. I'm not so worried. So that's great. Only um, cable ties, like always. <laughs> Until I come up with a better solution. Yeah, maybe in the future, some kind of Velcro. I'm, I'm not sure. As I said, so this is great. I'm happy. And yeah, before I show you the whole, I'm going to show you something else in the cabinet. It's going to be a very strange video this time, but never mind. Ah, yeah. <laughs> the Usitana, so Lodgini Usitana. It's now on its last verse, as we say. These are going to be its last blooms, but this time it's been very, very rewarding. The Selogeny species. That much I can tell you guys. Good colour to the flowers. Deep maroon. Uh, last time they were kind of uh, transparent looking. So uh, now, yeah, a bit better light. And the colour of the flowers will deepen. But look. What on earth do we have here? It's uh, Dendrobium rhodostictum. Look. Rhodostictum. The loveliest of flowers. Quite wide, aren't they? Around six, five, six. Comes out in clusters here. It can bloom from the very same spot in between the leaves there several times. And needs a good amount of moisture should be kept moist at all times yes so no dry rest <laughs> it's a very very nice one isn't it so it's just a little uh, off the record stuff thingy and something else off the record thingy I better, well, let, I better let Bloom's face the right angle so I can enjoy them but we got something else still in the cabinet. I'd like to show you guys. If you didn't see, if I didn't upload the short video, 
Uh, by now, I'm not, yeah, I'm not entirely sure, but here it is. Brassavola coculada. Also in bloom this time of the year. Maybe. No, it's, yeah, it's another new growth, but it's a mounted plant, so. Bloom last year. I think one month earlier or later. I'm not sure now. <laughs> so it's a summer bloomer, indeed. So now let us look at the hole. This is a one year and almost two month update on the Orchid Some More Orchid Hall I did on the 27th of May last year. And uh, well, I came up with the idea that I would like to, yeah, that we need to have a little bit more, a little bit stronger light sources up there is the fact. That is creating something, but it's not a bud yet. That is creating something too. It's uh, the fan it produced after the fan it bloomed from, so to speak. And that one would be here. Yes. When it arrived in May, it had already bloomed. Well, I cannot find anywhere when its blooming period will be. It should be. But uh, it's a primary hybrid cross between... Paphiopedalum gigantifolium and, of course, like always, Paphiopedalum rochellianum. One of my favorite Paphiopedalums, bloom-wise, that is, not growth-wise. I must admit, after a couple of years growing rochellianum uh, hybrids and primer hybrids and the rochellianum itself, that one is only shrinking. <laughs> it's half the size now. From when I got it, my Rochellianum. But it's still alive, but I cannot say that it's kicking. But anyway, Gigantifolium and Rochellianum. Uh, Gigantifolium, I believe <laughs> this one inherited that trait. Giant foliage. But if you saw, I can give you a little picture here. Of what this little root stump look like. This is some kind of a division, yeah? Somebody just simply chopped the whole orchid into two divisions, two sections, all at once. But it's been obviously chopped off in half. And something new was created, was being created next to the one that bloomed. And that will be this one. Yeah, you can see the old flower spike. Not on my care, no, no. This one, on the other hand, is from my care, turned out to be a good one, yeah. But still, this one is not the one it's going to bloom from. It's going to be blooming from the other one it had on the other side. Well, on its way, a bit on its way, this one. It's a very, very good sized uh, fan. You compare it to the one it bloomed from. Yeah, the one with the ugly leaf is still there. I thought I'd get rid of it, but obviously I didn't. It's still there, but well, it's the very same size. All right, all right, the very same size as the one it bloomed from. Uh, since I do not know its blooming period, yeah, one would imagine that it would be sometime, anytime soon. This little leaf, it's, uh, it's not supposed to be that, I don't think. But this one might create a little bud, but in order to encourage it, I added some old grow lead light. Figured that would be the parameter missing. Very nicely looking flowers. Paphiopedalum Hunsheng Eagle. I think I paid, could it be 38 or 32? No, 38 euro. But still, that's a bargain. I've seen this orchid for uh, twice the amount of money out there. And now it's quite impossible to get hold of, so I was lucky. But this time the orchids are more only have phalaenopsis on the July list, so. And that time around, they had almost only heavy pedalums on their mail list. So, I went ahead and bought a few. So, I'm going to clean the leaves with some milk. Yes? It's very, very good for... It's got disinfected properties as well as it's cleaning the dust off very, very efficiently. Makes the leaves a little bit more res resilient. We'll resist dust and stuff better. You can see there's still a little pattern 
to the leaf set. It's looking better and better. It looks like the whole plant has somehow um, risen. Yeah? It's more proud than it was before. A little bit more sturdiness to the leaves than had before. That could be a good indicator on it soon. Want to bloom. Yeah? So, let's see if we can see any roots down there. Probably not. Yeah, we can. It's a very, very frosted one, but little root tips there. Got loads of roots in here. So, that one has been growing on very, very nicely. And it's going to be even greater from now on. All right. Let's put him up there. See what it looks like. These are very, very strong lights. So uh, I need to put him uh, not directly underneath it. You see what I mean? But uh, yeah. Next one up on the table is another orchid. Let's look at the tag and see what it is. Perfume Pedalum Vesna. This Vesna is haunting me. <laughs> that name. Yeah, Black Wings. It's a very, very nice cross. Rothschildianum and I think Anedum. Yes. The one with the black dorsal sail, so to speak. I thought it would bloom last summer. Because this one is a uh, summer bloomer. But that one, that sheath dried. Yeah, it dried for us, unfortunately. And this is a growth it came, yeah, I ride with. Yeah. Not going to be with us for very much longer. But in return, we produce this one and another one here. So this summer there will be no blooms. But well, next summer, I think. That's what I think. But I may be wrong. Yeah, it's sitting bark. Not much more to it. The Pathiopedalum Rochilianum hybrids and the Rochilianum itself, the species, needs a great amount of years to bloom. When we were visiting the uh, Orchidengartneriet in Denmark, Hans Christiansen, the owner of the orchid nursery, showed his uh, Pathiopedal Rochilianum in full bloom. That was an amazing plant, an amazing show. Yeah, uh, just sat there with open mouth. Yes. He told us seven years. <laughs> so, as an achievement of his own to keep that one alive for seven years and to continuously keep it growing nicely throughout all these seven years from seeding stage till mature and providing the very right conditions to even get it into bloom. So that was really an achievement of his own. This is a nice one, Vesna Blackwings, as close to the Needham as it can be. This very well grown plant. And my house plants up there can benefit a little bit from the light as well. That's great. Yeah. Sometimes you can with them all. Alright, let's continue and let's hurry up. The battery is uh, at a very, very low level now. So. <laughs> I wasn't fully prepared. Anyways, this is one of my favorites. Epidendrum, Sevd Epidendrum. Yeah. Looks like, yeah, almost like what it looked like when I received it. Yeah. Not much happening actually, except for this little new growth now. It's producing right now. Yeah. Need to cover the roots. Hey. Must have uh, tripped over this one. But uh, yeah, it's not, you no, know, it's nothing to brag about really. Uh, these guys can bloom quite short, quite young. This size, I have an old one this size, but of that one, uh, yeah, suddenly died on me or whatever it did. I haven't been able to receive good plants with this variety at all, so anything this one does is a bonus, really. So three years to flowering size, now it's two years to flowering size, but as I said, it can be quite short and quite young. Yeah, not much to it. I haven't reported it since I did it together with you guys. It's even stuck here. Whoa. Well, ah, it's got roots. Quite good roots. Even. So, yeah. Just fill it up a little bit with some coconut tusk fiber. Yeah, what's that one? 
And I got a little um, phalaenopsis. The second one, in case my old one uh, didn't perform, I said. This one had one year to flower size, phalaenopsis shilleriana. Now it's a lot larger. It's growing on nice, very, very nicely. I must say, it's a perfect foliage. Gorgeously patterned, I think. This is how I like him. Yes. Good root system. And look, still an amazing plant. So I'm very happy I got it. And it's doing well under quite low light, so. So it will soon be time for it to bloom for us. Just wait a couple of months, I think. Yeah. This small, yeah, so tiny. But this is very, very good progress, yes. So happy I got it, this spare one. The other one is doing great as well, but this one is doing better. Who would have thought? Yeah, I'm this amazing, very, very, now, very, very huge plant. It's Epidendrum Nocturnum times sib sibling. Yes, cross back the one of its siblings. You know. uh, it's been blooming like crazy on each and every new cane to the top here of every new cane for many months, ever since I got it. And exceptionally excellent shaped flowers on this guy. The Epidendrum Nocturnum, a South American species orchid. A very bloom willing species. Nocturne means night. So it's fragrant at night time, especially. You see, its blooms are quite <laughs> very slim. Petals and sepals, but uh, it's a gorgeous little yellow center. Blooms for several spots. The same plant, simultaneously. Here's another one. And if that wasn't enough, it's got yet another bud coming there. So from three canes and now starting to shake some life into this old spike again. So it's a sequential bloomer indeed. So this is it. <laughs> yeah, one orchid left. Yeah. Patrick Pedum Susan Booth times Sandarianum. Yes. It's alive, and this is the orchid without the uh, hmm, the snail. Yeah? What's a snail to uh, the Sanders Pride? An orchid about this size, I also got, in the very same order. That one had um, brown edges. It was in a very, very bad state, the other one, and quite poor root system. This one is a lot better, growing very, very slowly. But still, looking kind of healthy, I believe. Uh, yeah, the other one had sand reanim in it as well. But one I received as uh, some kind of markings, snail markings. And uh, that snail has, yeah, I think it had been everywhere trying to destroy this or the other one. So uh, I don't think it's what, utterly my fault that I, that it didn't do well. You know? I threw it away not so long ago. I couldn't bear the sheer sight of it. This one is better. Not great, but better. Um, the Dracula project failed. Stuff happens, yeah? So I bought one Dracula, put it to the shadier corner, down to the left. Worked out so great. It even created spikes, loads of spikes. Several of my Draculas did. They were doing so great, so I needed to buy a couple of more. And also some more distribute quite cheap Dracula orchids. So, um... I decided to try them out uh, at a quite low cost, so it was all right, some of them at least, but um, they couldn't stand when autumn arrived. It was simply too hot for them, or uh, there was some sort of accumulation, or maybe you would need to have a use or a water, which I didn't. Uh, something went wrong, so they could stand a couple of months, half a year, but then they fail. So low light and good humidity isn't enough, all right? You need to add on the other parameters, such as cooler nights or cool days as well, and very, very clean water, I believe. I'm not sure. I'm not going to try them out again. 
yeah, no, not even the uh, more warmth tolerating Cold Bay could make it. It lasted for the longest period of them all, but it's still not with us today, so no more Draculas unless I find the exact perfect conditions for them. Somehow, somewhere, at a lot of point in my life. Yeah, I can tell that much, guys. But anyways, six out of eight is not bad. So, it's all right. It's all right. Not so bad. I even had room to uh, put a couple of the largest ones sitting there on that shelf to the back. That's great. I hope you enjoyed this video. And we should talk soon. And I hope we're going to see you in my next one. Yeah. So, please subscribe for more updates and stuff like this. And yeah, <laughs> have a lovely summer. Talk soon. Bye-bye.